Hello, Carbonauts, and welcome to this launch tutorial. And I'm going to be showing you how to get through that initial phase through the atmosphere of your planet to get your rocket into orbit. This is the hardest part of getting into orbit, is going through that atmosphere. That is why I call this the launch tutorial. So let's start off first though with the basics. Okay, so let's first start off with thrust to weight ratio. But first off, we need a rocket and a simple one at that. So we'll just use the command pod mark 1, a small fuel tank and the LVT45 engine. Now if you look in the top there, you have all these figures. This is a mod called Kerbal Engine Redux. Ignore it at the moment, I'll get into it later. Here you have your thrust to weight ratio and to the right there you have delta v let's have a look at the first weight ratio though okay here on the launch pad if you look at this curl engine redux we're using that it has a thrust to weight ratio number on it and what is thrust to weight ratio well imagine your rocket weighed one ton and imagine the thrust that you're giving was one ton that thrust will be the same as your Mass means that it'll be balanced out, means your rocket wouldn't go anywhere, it may hover though. So if we reduce this thrust limiter here, till it's one, that way your rocket will hover or stay still. But what if your thrust was lower? So let's go ahead and try that. Let's increase the thrust and engage. See, I'm thrusting up full thrust, but we're not going here. What happens if we put the thrust weight ratio back to one? Now it's floating, it's only just lifting the rocket. But what happens if we put the thrust to full? And you see the thrust weight ratio has gone quite high. In fact, it's increasing. That's because the engine is using the fuel, which is reducing the mass of the rocket. That's important to know when you're building something and important to know when you're flying your rocket because you don't really want to go through the atmosphere too fast because that will cause excess drag and overheating as you can see by here. So we'll get into what's next I suppose, which is Delta V. So what is Delta V? Delta V is the amount of speed your rocket can change in an instant. It's basically a calculation which can work out from the engine and the mass and the fuel in your rocket to change your speed in one instant. However, that's not going to happen because you have things like aerodynamic drag and fighting gravity and everything else in between. So it's mainly used as a rough number. You can use it to work out if you're gonna get into orbit or what height you can go and get to. Let's see how high this one will get to. And what this experiment is going to show is with that total speed, how high can we get with that in the atmosphere? Okay, so we burnt all our fuel and we went up to 94 kilometers. So what happens if we add more fuel? Well, adding an extra tank, let's use this one as an example. Our delta V has gone up, but our thrust to weight ratio has gone down. So what does this mean? Not much at the moment. So let's have a quick look. See thrust to weight ratio here and before. And thrust to weight ratio and delta V after. Delta V has increased, but thrust to weight ratio has decreased. So let's do the same experiment, but now with the extra tank. And we can see what speed we will get up to. No, not what speed. We will get see what altitude we will get up to in total. You can see we're exceeding the thermal dynamics of the atmosphere. And we got to 210 kilometers. So what happens if we increase the tanks to get more delta V? Well, the thrust weight ratio goes ridiculously low. In fact, it goes so low that your rocket launch is really slow. And this is not what you want. You want enough thrust to fight gravity, but not too much to encounter drag. And that is a good segue for our next subject, which is drag. Okay, so what is drag? First off, press F12 to enable aerodynamic drag overlay. As usual, launch. 
and this is a tall rocket and there's a reason why I made this a tall rocket is because you want the center of mass high and if I start tilting this over because drag is pushing on top of the rocket drag is pushing straight down so it's not causing much much problem we're just fighting it directly with the rocket however when we turn you get the drag lines which are the red lines now once they go at a certain angle you start to spin out of control and this is what you want to avoid and there is some ways you can go overcome that by the way those blue lines are aerodynamic lift they're normally used for wings but it's also affected by the sides of the rocket so they are something to think about but if you have traveling in a straight line on your Pro Gear Vector, you'll be fine. So how can we stop Jebediah from dying like this? Well, there are two ways you can overcome aerodynamic drag. One is a nose cone. Okay, you can first, you could add a nose cone like this, the Mark 16 parachute. It makes the rocket a bit punchier, also adds a parachute for you to come home safely. Or you could add a nose cone. That makes it look like a little Christmas cap, but there you go, it should work and help with aerodynamics. However, Squad have also added something called fairings, or airstream capsules. Where first off, the best way to attach them is underneath a decoupler. So you can detach them, and you build them like so. Now, yes, that's a bit big for that capsule, so I'll re-fix that in a moment, but you get the point. It protects the your it protects your payload. It encapsulates it and makes it more aerodynamic, especially if your payload is not aerodynamic to begin with. But there are other things you can do. Now we showed you how the rock was flipping over. That will still happen if you turn too much. Now to overcome that, you need a bit more control. Now you could use these winglets, place them on the side. Now these winglets here, they'll cut into the atmosphere and cause your rocket to go straight. However, if you want control, you're going to have to choose ones which give you gimbling control. Now place them on there. That will also control your rocket, give you extra control for maneuvering your rocket so you can um, turn over and perform your gravity turn so let's show you okay the same rocket but with the nose cone and the fins to give it control so again we're launching up we get the aerodynamic overlay up and then we'll start pitching over and keep an eye on the nav pole because what you want is to keep that progray vector in the center of your nav pole. But you can see I'm moving over, but those winglets are pushing me back towards that progray vector. However, because that progray vector is also moving with us, we're not losing control. Now, in extreme circumstances, if you twip it too much, yes, you can lose control. That's because your rocket's going sideways and it's not working well. But with those winglets, it'll quickly gain control of your rocket, especially a small rocket like this. We will get into larger rockets soon. Now let's talk about flight. Okay, if you open up Kerbal Space Program in a sandbox mode and you go to load, you'll have a ship called Kerbal X. This is built by squads for you to use to practice. It's also the best sh best rocket to use to practice your launches. And there's nothing else more I can say by here other than let's show you. Okay, so let's launch this. Now I want you to keep an eye on an apple. Now we're gonna tilt right slightly. This is the beginning of your gravity turn. And this is very important make sure the center of that nav pole stays on the center or close to that prograde vector and also if you look at the Kerbal engine redux mod keep your thrust to weight ratio under two if you're not using the thrust to weight ratio on the Kerbal engine redux mod and i've got stage by here then you what you're going to do is keep an eye out for the aerodynamic drag 
purchased by here starting now. Also, don't forget to keep your nav ball on the center of that pro gray vector while turning over slightly. Yes, there's a lot to think of. And now, yep. Yeah. Now we turn it over, we can keep our thrust higher because we're getting through the thickest part of the atmosphere. But still, keep an eye on that ball, turn it over, making sure that prograde vector is close to the center. That way, you do not lose control of your rocket. Now, I say this is the best one to start off with to practice in because it is a quite stable, uh, well, quite a stable rocket. However, what if you got an unstable rocket? Let's have a look. Now, if you think that is a large rocket, take a look at this. This is my man all-terrain vehicle with the launcher and it is absolutely huge. And this is the one I've chosen to show you because it is causing problems. Now, if I'm going to make this a bit harder for myself, I'm going to add some docking ports. To make this unstable so as I'm adding them let's talk about what I'm trying to show you well I'm trying to show you wobbly rocket syndrome and yes it happens to me as well so let's go and launch this okay so launching this straight from the launch pad and keep an eye on those nodules on the top of the fairing now if I wobble the rocket you see the wobbling side to side that's the ro that's the rover inside wobbling side to side because of those docking ports aren't stable and you see we're tilting over faster than we should be because of the wobble so how do you correct that what do you do to make your rocket stable i've only got one word for you space tape and these are the strapped connectors they're f Familiarly known to the KSP community as space tape. And all you have to do is make sure that you're put enough space tape around the rocket to stabilize your payload. Now let's give this another go. Again, straight to launch. Now you can see that those, when I'm wobbling the rocket by here, the payload is not wobbling so much. However, this rocket is still hard to control. So let's tilt over a bit and see if we lose absolute control. Everything seems fine. You can see the aerodynamic drags on there. The only reason why this is fine is because I'm being very carefully controlling this. But what happens when you've got a large rocket and you find it hard to control? Like, if I gave this to anyone, they'd probably find it hard to control straight away and have to give it a few goes. Okay, so to control your spacecraft, if you go to the control and command tab, you've got things like these, the inline reaction wheel. So let's go ahead and add these to the rocket. Let's remove that. Just add them straight to there. In fact, we'll add two to for extra stability. Now, they're like reaction wheels. In other words, they tilt and there's a mechanism inside them which tilt to try and move your rocket in a certain way. Let's rebuild this fairing. But also, there are other things that you can do. In addition to the inline reaction wheels, you can also add these RCF thrusters. Now, when you add these, make sure you add four to control in all directions for your rocket. However, there's one thing to point out for here, is you need to know where your center of mass is. Now, you want to place these RCS thrusters at equal distance from the center of mass. Make sure you don't go and place them on top of engines, which you can't do. Make, uh, make sure you can place them in places where you can. Now, sometimes you'll have to make do with placing them in places which are a little off center of mass, but that's okay because your center of mass will change as you burn fuel in your rocket. Now, in addition to the RCS thrusters, you've got these Venera engines. And they're exactly, they work exactly the same as the RCS thrusters, but they use liquid fuel instead of RCS fuel. Or monopropellant is also known. They're also quite powerful. 
So placing them again at equal distance. And don't forget to put the symmetry correctly. The four. And now let's take this rocket out for a spin and see what we get. So back to the launch pad. And off we go. Okay, watch the RCS thrusters. You can see them firing as we're turning, starting our gravity turn. However, look what happens here. I'm turning over and the SAS is trying to use all those RCS thrusters. And it's causing us to wobble out of control. So what are we gonna do about well, the answer is simple. After reloading the rocket, what you do is you don't add too much control. Once you add too much control and you use the SAS computer to auto-correct your movements, it's going to correct too much. You're going to lose control and your rocket's going to wobble out of control and kill Jebediah in the process. So after adding just enough thrusters, let's try again. And back again to the launch pad. And this time we're gonna do it for reals. We're gonna get ourselves into orbit. Again, using the RCS thrusters to control the rocket and keeping the prograde vector on the center of the nav pole as close as possible while still turning over. And also I'll be controlling the thrust to weight ratio on the side by controlling the thrust of the main engine. Now it sounds easy, but it takes practice to learn all this and get yourself a good launch profile. So what I'm going to do right here is fast forward the video because this rocket itself takes quite some time to get into orbit. You can see, keeping good control. We do lose a little control by here, but always keep your hands on the keys to keep control. And the idea is to keep your thrust weight ratio down so you're not use, experiencing too much drag. Then you won't experience too much loss of control. You can always pull, get back in control, get your orbit correct as you get in up further. Don't worry about slight overheating at this point because you're through the thickest part of the atmosphere and through the thinnest. You can also see by here I've slowed down my gravity turn because we're almost at altitude. Once your altitude is over 70 kilometers, you can go ahead and make a maneuver to get yourself into orbit. Then it's just a matter of pointing at your nav ball marker for your burn. And fast forward in time. As soon as you're in space, it becomes a lot easier because you can't have to handle with aerodynamic drag. So all we're doing here is going to our final orbit stage. And in all tensive purposes, we're in orbit. For a quick check of the map, and we're gonna dip down the atmosphere. Not to not to worry because you could always correct that. And lastly, let's talk about mods that will help you for your launch. Now you have two mods, Kerbal Engine Redux mod, and you also have the MechJet mod. Now both do the same jobs, they'll give you information on your crafts, and they can give you information on your flight while you're flying your rocket. But MechJet does one thing, Kerbal Engineer does not. So let's go check that out. Now Kerbal Engineer Redux mod is excellent for giving you data and some of the data on it is sometimes better than MechJep. But this is where I want to show you. This is a launch tutorial, so we're going to use the automatic controls of MechJeb. Hence the name MechJeb because it's a mechanical jeb. I want the scent guidance, so if you select that and what you want to do is choose the set. Limit to terminal velocity so you don't go too fast through the atmosphere. Then you've got this limited AOA, I think that's the turn rate. I set it to five, I find that a bit fast. So I'm gonna reduce it to three this time and see how fast that is. Next, you want to make sure auto stage is engaged, so it stages your rocket for you. And if you go to in the set, edit ascent path, up the slide up the top, where is your turn, your start turn for your gravity turn. I set that to about one kilometer. 
and that will be your orbit turn exactly the same as I've done with a large rocket but with this Kerbal X rocket so let's engage autopilot and you have to press space to start it off if you see that. and off it goes now you see it's also got a roll program I think that's for things like shuttles you can turn that off if you want however I left it on because it's on as default now it's starting to stage in the rocket let's do a little fast forward this and you can watch it do its gravity drop now I have to point out about Mech Jeb it is good for this rocket it is good for quite a few things but using the scent guidance on large rockets I've had problems with so it depends on the design you create whether it's not a matter of whether it's engineered correctly it's a matter of whether ascent guidance can work with it I suppose you could get it to launch with any vehicle as long as you alter the parameters and learn how to use it properly but for normal launching I prefer to do it by myself and this is just but a demonstration so now McJeb's getting into the final orbit phase and hey presto it's done ladies and gentlemen this is McJeb giving us a near perfect orbit anyway I hope you found this tutorial helpful even if you're a new player or an advanced player perhaps this has helped you engineer your rockets engineer your flight path engineer your launch I'm Orbiter, trust me, I'm an engineer.